tell you once, I'm so tired right now. Mm. I'm gonna text Emma, see what she's doing. Josh, I think you have an episode of Heaven's Kitchen. Wait, what? There was an episode of Heaven's Kitchen today. Right, now, yeah, what am I making? Well, wouldn't you like to know? Wouldn't you, homie peeps, to the kitchen now? Tim doesn't know because he's like, the idiot left his phone there and he doesn't want to be here. You can sit down and have a great time editing later. Why you ask?
So, yeah, welcome to Late Night with Chester, as you can clearly tell behind me. It's certainly not late night. It's one thing you find out about me as the show progresses that I'm not actually, I lie a lot, I should probably, instead of glossing it over. I, I gloss a lot of things up and I lie a lot. Overall, I'm a dickhead, but I'm the type of dickhead you love. No, but anyway, so it's not late night. I just put it, as I said, I put the gloss on things and excuse me while I get the kettle. I also tend to overestimate slash underestimate a lot of things. I'm, I'm just an all round correct, no, just not even normal guy, one sec. stand-up routine. So I'm not smart, I'm just a normal guy. Yeah, hold your applause till the end. <laughs> this is why I can't ever be a stand-up comedian. No jokes. Honestly, zilch. I used to tell my friends, um, the biggest joke, the best joke I ever know is that, um, that I want to be a stand-up comedian. <laughs> yeah, that's the best joke I know. Thank you, good night. No. Um, just so sort of waiting for the water to boil. Let's talk about what I'm cooking with. Maybe that'll get me off on the right foot. So I'm doing hot dogs today. What are they like, okay? Hot dogs. Whoever invented that name? As you can tell, my material is absolutely terrible. <laughs> I go silent sometimes because I just can't think of things to say. Put these over here. Want some water boils? I can bung them in the water. See, I'm now I'm just talking about cooking. It's not even funny. Oh, look who's appeared. Right on cue. Yeah, what do you want? Huh? What do you want? Nothing. I'm just, I'm just commenting. So I'm pretending it's a stand-up gig now. That's my audience through the lens. Don't, don't mind him, audience. Don't need to applaud to him. He's just a lazy friend of mine. <laughs> burping away. I call him the burping human jukebox. <laughs> Any request, he'll do it. Sweet child of mine, you better believe it. <laughs> Sweet burp of mine. Stairway to heaven, you know it. This is my microphone. There's nothing else that looks like a microphone around here that I want to pick up. I mean, there's like a dirty aerosol can there, but I'm, I'm not even going to pick that up. Excuse me while I put in the sausages. You can stop the you should be able to stop the recording with the phone in front of you. What? Yeah, I heard what you said. Ugh. Can you see the picture through the phone? I'm not even looking at the phone. I don't have an auto cue. I'm a good comedian. I'll, I'll say that <coughs> again. I don't have an auto cue. I'm a good comedian. <sighs> Ow! Timo has surpassed the need for comfort in a bed and gone for comfort on the stairs. <laughs> you know what makes perfect sense? I always thought he was a bit crooked. <laughs> You're lucky I didn't have my cat or tube down here. No, you'd have hated it yesterday on the bus back from work, Tim. I was firing off loads of puns about fish. <laughs> Yeah, I was making a joke, like if you held up a plastic gun with a fish head and then a manager came along and said, what are you doing messing about with the fresh food? You go, sorry, I was just doing some role play, or should I say soul play? 
<laughs> I'm wreaking havoc in the deli section. I'm recreating cod <laughs> with the weapons available. <laughs> These are just examples. Tim threatens me a lot. Well, one thing you people should know, see, I'm pretending to stand up comedy. One thing you people should know about me is I make a lot of puns. To the irritating level sometimes. I'm not going to stand here for the next hour and a half and bore you all with my puns. It's not going to happen. I'll give you an example. Of that. Oh, look who's here. The cardboard Nazi right on cue. If you're holding a pool cue, that would make it, make it more funny. Let's see, um... Wait, wait. I'm not going to let you hit me until I make an actual pun that's relevant to today. This is to prove to my audience, my lovely audience, who are doing being delightful right now at the beginning of the show. We're doing a great job. Um, look who's here, right on cue, the cardboard Nazi. I'm still thinking of a pun. Another thing you should know about me, I take a long time to get to the point of getting things done. The sausages are cooking quite nicely. They'll be far done by the time I've got this pun in my head. I know you want to improve a bit of puns, and I'm not really delivering it per se right now, but mark my words, it'll soon be here. Isn't that right? Mr. Cardboard Nazi. Um, see, the funny thing is about cardboard, it's a very. You can't, it's boring, you can't talk about much things. I mean, just talking about it makes me bored. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I need to hit me on the head with that. I know you're expecting some violence, yeah, but it's hard to see you doing any better. Blocked. How are the sausages doing? Yeah, still going along. Now we'll get into the bulk of the show. Let's talk about transport, shall we? How has anyone got here? Bus, car, train? Personally, I teleported. Don't ask me how, I'm magic. If you stay back half an hour after the show, I'll reveal all. FYI, I've got strict, got strict um, directions on who stays back and for how long and what they do. I won't bore you with all the details, but like I like my weather, 21, I'm not gay, I should say, first of all. It's women and only like I like my weather. Wild and forever 21. But I'm going to get to the weather section later because I'm a weather enthusiast. Um, <laughs> look like who's stepping up to pitch on third pitch to for a home run. <laughs> I'd say, look, if it was me holding up the bat, I'd look at, I'd pick out a girl in the audience. I go, look who's stepping up to pitch to third to second base. <laughs> but back to the topic at hand: transport. No. Being all serious, there's no sort of thing as teleportation, but you know, bus, car, train, plane, all equally valid modes of transport, all ladies and gentlemen here or in the world would agree with me. Um, one thing about them all is it's quite peculiar what happens on them, isn't it? For example, have you ever been on a quiet carriage in a train? They're incredibly frustrating, unless you want to get a good sleep, which, to be honest, you don't. I do tend to fall asleep on trains, but that's only when I'm generally tired. You can never fall asleep on a train when you want to, but can't. But the thing is, on quiet carriages, you get a lot of weird people. I was once listening to my music, as you do on a train, and fairly loud, I won't lie, and I probably did annoy a few of the passengers. And the woman sitting next to me, businesswoman, probably mid to late 30s, same chatting with her husband, she actually tapped me on the shoulder at one point. And I know it's a quiet carriage, which they really, these idiots take it too literally tapped me on the shoulder and mined for me to turn the music down. She's like, basically to say, turn the music down, it's way too loud. And yeah, and I know she wasn't deaf or mute or whatever, mute, because I got off on the same stop she did and she talked to her friend, she's saying, oh, I heard him, it was incredibly loud. I should point out, I can do accents, but a woman's accent, I fall flat on. 
absolutely horrible. So a high voice you hear me doing throughout the show is my interpretation of a woman's accent. Ready? Girls, get your tits out! No. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> Planes. That's another thing, right? Especially long flights. I say you can't sleep on trains. Planes is a whole new level. It's like, it's like there's a game for sleeping, you know? Comfy bed, level one. Hot, slightly harder bed, level two. You know, air mattress, level three. Slash rock hard bed. You know, really hard mattresses. Chair, level four. You know, floor, like tile, the carpeted floor, level five. Tile floor, level six. Train, level seven. And at the bottom of the pile is a plane, level eight. You cannot get to sleep on a plane, no matter how hard you try. I mean, the only way you can get to sleep on a plane is if you splash out over a thousand or so dollars to get a sleeper. But even then, it's not worth it, because if you're doing a 24-hour flight, it's impossibly expensive, incredibly expensive. And it's not worth it on like a, a short five-hour flight to pay over a thousand dollars to sleep, is it really? <laughs> Basically, you can't sleep on a plane. Not only is there all the noises and they switch the thing. They, the, the people, fair enough, there's this thing called jet lag, but I've no idea why that the people... I should check these sausages for one second. <laughs> Rambling on right now. <laughs> yeah, whilst my incessant rambling's going on, the tough sausages are done. I think we should eat this. No. What was I saying? Planes. You can't sleep on them. But why on earth people ever decided that it would be a good idea to get your body clock used to the change of time zones by turning the lights on or off at random, unexplained, unfrequented, not unfrequent, unexplained and unplanned out intervals during the day is beyond me. Okay, it's hard enough to sleep on a plane, let alone with lights going on and off every two to three to four hours, and people watching TV constantly. It's like their eyes are glued to the screen, literally. I once went on a plane from England back to Australia, and there was a guy sat behind me with his headset on, literally this close to the TV screen, for the whole 24 hours, I'm not telling a lie. Okay? I don't know how on earth you manage that. I kept turning around to check if he died or was dead because honestly, he just didn't, I mean, he was moving, he was constantly getting drinks all that and he's just sitting there like that, constantly getting drinks when the stewardesses walked past, but then his eyes did not leave the screen, not once, he didn't once turn his head to talk to the people sitting next to him, he just talked facing the screen. Planes are ludicrous, you, that's why you can't get to sleep, okay? Crying kids, another one, and... Best of all, if at best of all, obviously most of all, if you hadn't been to mention before, the seats are uncomfortable, beyond belief, unbearable. They're like sitting on, it's like a rock on a rock with a bit of glass wedged between it. That's seriously how uncomfortable it is. Maybe I'd rather sit on that than the plane seat for 24 hours, who knows? Probably not, but I'm getting at that, that it's that uncomfortable. Even if it's only rented building. Yeah, exactly. But that's a different story. Because there's more things that wrong me on. Don't worry, this isn't all about planes. I'm not going to be going on about planes next half an hour later. And another thing about planes. Did you know airports are... You know, <laughs> another thing is, some people really frustrate me. The most annoying passengers get on planes. They probably have like a list of people that line up before it and say, are you really annoying? Are you more annoying than this? They have a scale, right? Not annoying, and you have to be. There's like Justin Bieber at the top of the chart in terms of annoyingness. And if you're if you're as or more annoying than him, then you get on board the plane. That's how I think it goes. I got on because I'm a celebrity. That's why I'm giving this stand up gig to you. <laughs> I was on that plane once, and we were about to leave a plane. Shut up. We we're about to leave a plane, like leave the station in Moscow, Oman. We did a quick stop off to do the um, de ice the wings. And basically what happened was this one guy <coughs> would not st sit down for 20 minutes. He was just standing up, drinking a coffee, chatting with his friends. Stewardess who kept saying, sit down, we're about to take off. Pilot kept saying that. Did not sit down, just standing, leaning over the seat really casually, drinking his coffee, pacing back and forth. I think, went, think he went to the bathroom once and chatting to his friends in the aisle. He wouldn't chat to his friends in the bathroom. But, um... <laughs> That's annoying about planes. This comedy sesh has turned into a rant. 
I believe. And that's the problem, I feel, why I'm not a good stand-up comedian, because I rant a bit too much. No one wants to pay money to say to see someone stand on a stage for an hour and a half go blah 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 this thing sucks blah 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 and then this and another thing blah blah don't worry I can make jokes okay I can do some kind of joke whether it be inside put that down but, but you got the joke the anti joke police today. yeah it's impossible with the unfunny Nazi standing right next to me to make a joke <laughs> Or in the hands because it'll get whacked over the head. See, there's no fun with, it, with that. I believe the world has to be a fun place to live in, to people, to people to find enjoyment out there, about at it. Here he is, giving me the stare of doom. I should really get on and finish my dinner. All I've got to do is cut up this stuff here. But my point is, the world needs to be a fun place. Stop having plane rides which are uncomfortable, let them sleep, give them beds. People going, sitting on a flight for 24 hours, they expect to sleep and have a good night's sleep. For all the pilots out there, you wouldn't be expected to invite to go to a hotel where you'd have to stay mid between your long flights and have to sleep on the tiled floor in the lobby, would you? It's what I'm getting at. <laughs> let them sleep, let them have fun. You, shut up, let people have fun. He is the antichrist of funner. Funner? He is the antichrist of humour. Okay? And comedy and all things like that. Alright? This is what we do to the antichrist. We shove a bag in his face. We shove a bag in his face. I should do that again because I picked up I didn't pick up a bag before. This is a bag. What we do to the antichrist of humour, we shove a bag in his face. He doesn't care because his comedy is a bit plastic anyway. I'm out! <laughs>